Arrow 93.1. Your Uncle Joe Benson with you here. What a pleasure. On a Friday morning, we have been joined by Ray Manzarek. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, man. Good to great, be here. Good great to, to here. see you again. And now, I got a piano here, man. That is nice. 88 keys, too. You yeah, waited, as they <laughs> say. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm going to do things on this keyboard. I don't know what I'm going to do. You get near a keyboard, there's a whole other thing comes through, isn't it? Oh, well, you know, these you fingers, know? they have a mind of their own. I, I'm not in charge of them. They're, uh... And somebody asked us, you know, why don't you have a bass player? And I said, we got a bass player? Yeah. yeah. It's lefty, you know, it's my left hand. I mean, who's doing that, man? You know, he loves to do these kind of things. He's very steady, a nice steady guy. The Doors were very unique in that it wasn't just a blues band or working off blues chords. There was a lot of jazz involved in what you guys did. There was a folk element involved. You had uh, four very disparate uh, uh, people involved. Your background is all kinds of music, including the blues and jazz and everything yeah, else. Yep, yep. Uh, John Densmore, the drummer, really was pretty much a jazz yeah, drummer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he studied he studied um, uh, um, percussion, mm -hmm. and he's a you know he can read drum music. Have you ever seen drum music? It's like impossible to read. I don't know how they do it. Yeah, but John was the main man in the uh, in in his high school marching band. He was the lead snare drummer. So you had to, your time had to be really precise because you're in charge. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you've got fifty people marching yeah. off in yeah. circles and around. So John was gong gong gong. Mm -hmm. So he was uh, he was always steady as a rock man. And Robbie's a flamenco guitar player. You know, he actually hadn't played electric guitar really before he hooked up with you yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just kind of dabbled with it, but he was a flamenco. He had studied flamenco guitar. He played on stage with his fingers. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't use a pick. He played flamenco style. It was amazing to watch the guy do it. And yeah, so, you know, and, and Morrison as a French symbolist poet and beatnik poet, so you blend all that, you know, my classical keyboards and stuff and blues and jazz out of the south side of Chicago. So, uh, and our love of film, you know, Jim and I were at the film school together and, and John and Robbie were definitely film buffs too. So you blend all of that together and put it on the beach in Venice, California and put a little certain substances into it and there come the doors. One of the, the first big commercial hit you had, your first breakthrough was Light My Fire. Absolutely. That yeah. was one of the first tunes that yeah. Robbie had anything to do with as far as the writing. Well, Robbie... Ooh. Yeah. What a cool yeah. sound. Yeah. Ro Jim said, uh, okay, we've used up just about all the new songs we've got. Everybody go home. It was like Thursday. He said, everybody go home. Here's your weekend assignment, your, your homework assignment. Go home and write a song. And then we had a, con uh, a rehearsal on Monday or Tuesday. We all come back, and, and uh, Jim hasn't written anything. And he said, well, do you have it? He said, no, you guys are supposed to write. Said, okay, mm -hmm. I haven't written anything. John hasn't written anything. Robbie Krieger comes in and says, I wrote something. The first song I ever wrote, mm -hmm. Light My Fire. Can you imagine the first song out of this guy? So, so it's like A minor to F sharp minor. And then he's got the hard four. He's got that Latin thing, you know. And that's what Jose Feliciano picked up on when he did Light My Fire. Then it goes, John puts it into hard four. Come on, baby. And Jim, Jim comes up with the second verse to that. Um, I came up with the uh, with the opening. Um, what did you do in the middle? You did something. Yeah, in the middle well, in the middle, uh, well, the opening, the opening's little box stuff. You know, I, I did a circle of fifths. Uh, yeah. And then the uh, uh, the middle of it is John Coltrane, and we're doing. John Coltrane does like this. This is in three. One, two, three. One, oh, two, three. Oh my God! Three. Yeah. He does that in my favorite thing. So this is our homage to John Coltrane. We do it in four. Same thing. Three, four. One, two, three. So, so it goes. You know that it would be untrue. You know that I would be a liar. If I was to say to you, now we couldn't say this on television. Yeah. Girl, we couldn't get much higher. We couldn't uh, say we higher on the Ed well, Sullivan Show. We weren't allowed to use that word. 
So the solo then goes. Uh, and then I get to go. And then John kicks in a three against four. After my solo, after Robbie's solo, we got to play as long as we wanted, and then bang, bang, and back into the introduction. And then the song goes out. You know, we do two verse and verse chorus and verse chorus, and that's how it goes. Simple as that. Robbie Krieger's first song, Light My Fire. Can you imagine? <laughs> Ray, Ray Manzarek with us here at Arrow 93 in the Kenwood studio. You guys had more stuff in that song than most bands had in the first two years they were around. Well, you know, we studied our instruments. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, everybody's, everybody, Robbie studied flamenco guitar. John was the, the main drummer with the high school. I studied some classical. And, you know, and, and Jim wrote poetry. Jim wrote his first poem when he was eight years old, The Pony Express. It's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. That's Jim Morrison's a, first poem, yeah. The Pony Express. I don't know how it goes. I can't remember it. And his Cub Scout uniform. They've got uh, this little Jim Morrison display. <laughs> it's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's insane, man. This little...